I'm Hallie Cooper and welcome to today's CTV special. The City of Calabasas is always looking for ways to try to protect the environment and to help keep the community and the planet clean and healthy. How are they doing that? Well, these guys are focusing on capturing all the harmful debris that gets thrown from the street down the water into the oceans. So they're putting up debris screens on the catch basins to help filter out all the unwanted stuff. So, it takes two crews to actually get this done. One crew inside the storm, the catch basin, and one crew on the outside. How does this work? I personally have no idea, but these professionals, I think, can tell us something. We are here with Alex Farasati, the Environmental Services Manager of the city. So Alex, tell us exactly what we're doing here. This is a, what we call a, a storm drain catch basin mm -hmm. uh, that we have to install the screens in order to comply with certain water quality regulations. Okay. We receive a grant from a state agency called Santa Monica Bay Restoration Commission mm -hmm. and the grant is, was funded through Prop 84 which was approved by the California residents mm -hmm. to uh, improve the water quality of our creeks, rivers and ultimately our beaches. Mm. So our uh, the idea for this catch basin is to put the screens on the curb and also inside the catch basin mm -hmm. to capture any trash and any debris that comes from the uh, urban areas. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a common misunderstanding that the underground system that uh, our storm drain uh, drain to are the same as the sewer system. I would like to clarify that there are two separate undergrounding systems that drain our waters. One is the sewer line that comes from our houses, schools, or uh, commercial uh, establishments. And uh, the drain goes to a re treatment facility. The water gets treated, the solid gets separated from the waste, and the water becomes a recycled water that we can use for irrigation. And the solid, for example, in the case of our Las Vegas Municipal Water District, is pumped to a composting facility and becomes a compost and we can use them for uh, uh, landscaping or for other uh, uh, purposes in our backyard or in farms. But the, the rainwater that goes into our storm drain goes directly to the ocean with no treatment. As it's shown here, the storm drain line is the blue line that goes directly from the streets and curves to the creek and eventually to the ocean. However, the other line that comes from the houses, schools, commercial activities, it gets directed to a treatment facility such as here. In some cases, the excess water is discharged in the creek, but in most cases, the water is reused for irrigation. So these two systems uh, function completely on a separate lines. They don't coincide and they don't merge into each other. One goes directly to the creek and to the ocean. One comes to the treatment facility and the solid gets separated from water. This is very important for our residents to understand that if a trash or any pollutants gets on the sidewalk and it drains into our catch basin, we have no way of capturing that trash other than the small filtration system that we have on the curb or inside the catch basin. And in some cases, if there is no catch basin, the water drains directly to our creeks and eventually to the ocean. I think one of the things that frustrates us most about trash ending up in our, in our waterways and on our beaches is that it's uh, a problem that we could solve tomorrow and it wouldn't cost a dime. What we need to do is we all need to have personal responsibility for cleaning up after ourselves. Uh, LA County estimates that between 900,000 and a million cigarette butts are deposited on streets and sidewalks every month. So that's a lot, that's a lot of trash right there and that has a lot of negative impacts. 
So how exactly does this improve the quality of the water? Well, it's going to improve the quality of water in a number of ways. Uh, one, it prevents all of the small debris, especially the cigarette butts and other contaminants and small plastic particles from uh, making its way down to the waterways and eventually to the ocean. And by eliminating those uh, articles from getting down into the waterways, uh, we will not be compounding the problem of contamination and then affecting the ecosystems from there. That's great. That's great. So it takes two crews to actually get this done. Can you tell us a little bit about what each crew is doing? Sure. Right now we have a crew working on this catch basin. We have a, a man down inside the catch basin. He's on a body harness with a cable. And the other gentleman here on top is assisting him with the articles that he needs to construct the device itself. Mm -hmm. And then we have another team across the street that is uh, preparing uh, the items in advance. So the teams work uh, together and, and get these devices installed effectively. So what happens exactly when trash is accumulated inside the catch basin? What goes on? Well, actually what's going to happen is at, at each catch basin, we have a situation where the catch basin has a certain width to it and a certain depth to it. Depending on those parameters, the device itself that will be installed will vary in height. Some of the units are going to be 18 inches to 24 inches tall. And you can imagine that at 24 inches, these devices will be able to contain a lot of debris annually um, at the cleaning, during the cleaning event that will all be removed. And again, the units will be checked periodically by the team in Calabasas mm -hmm. and to ensure that they're uh, going to be able to uh, retain the trash until the annual cleaning process. In the case where you have locations that may need it in advance, the uh, city of Calabasas will uh, react accordingly and clean those units out in advance. Projects like this should be basic housekeeping for, uh, for all cities. Uh, unfortunately, unlike street sweeping or like uh, gar garbage collection, there's no dedicated funding uh, for these types of projects, no household fee for stormwater. Uh, so uh, we step in where we can to help. Here we are today in the city of Calabasas. We are going to be water testing the new state-of-the-art ARS CL12 catch basin screen. We're going to be performing a water test today. What we're basically going to do is take the water outside of the tank. We're going to discharge it into the front area of the screen. And we're going to go ahead and watch the gate briefly open with the force of the water. And then the gate will go ahead and retract itself closed and it'll relock itself. So we're going to start that test here right now. Go ahead, Jerry. So basically right now at this point, the water has uh, gone through the front of the screen. It has activated the force plates and it has unlocked the gate. The gate opened up with the amount of water and the gate went ahead and self-closed and relocked itself at this time. Show that the gate is locked. Okay, very good. This was a complete test. Uh, the gate is uh, functioning correctly. It'll open and it'll uh, self-lock once the water has passed. Keeping trash uh, uh, out of our waterways, out of our streams, out of our rivers, off the of beaches and out of the ocean uh, is a goal that both the city and the San Marco Bay Restoration Commission both share. These devices are pretty simple, pretty cost effective, and uh, they're very effective for what they do. So uh, it's, a, it's a great project and we were happy to support it with funding. Well, I would like to say right now that uh, the city of Calabasas is uh, leading the charge in terms of uh, green initiatives. Um, Alex Ferrisotti and his team with the city of Calabasas is, uh, is leading the way for other municipalities in order to engage these type of devices for their stormwater runoff program.